Hello everyone, let's identify together the structures on the brain and the cerebral cortex. First, the cerebral cortex consists of lobes. This right here is the frontal lobe. This is the parietal lobe. And this right here is the occipital lobe. And this is the temporal lobe. This structure is the cerebellum. This is the pons. And this right here is the medulla oblongata. This is the spinal cord. Don't confuse the cerebrum with the cerebellum. This is the cerebrum. This is the cerebellum. This sulcus right here is the central sulcus. A sulcus is a superficial cut. We also have the lateral sulcus on the side and the parieto occipital sulcus. These are the three main sulcus. The fissure between the cerebellum and the cerebrum is the transverse cerebral fissure, also called the transverse fissure. A fissure is a deep cut, whereas a sulcus is a superficial cut. The ridges on the brain, they are called the gyrus. So this right here is a gyrus. This is a sulcus, as we mentioned earlier, a sulcus is a superficial cut. And this is a fissure. The first fissure we mentioned is the transverse cerebral fissure, also called the transverse fissure. This right here is the cortex, also called the cerebral cortex, which consists of the gray matter. Whereas this right here is the white matter. The white matter appears lighter in color because it is rich in the myelinated axons. Whereas the gray matter appears darker in color because it is rich in the neuronal bodies. This is the central sulcus. It separates the pre-central gyrus, pre meaning before, central, the central gyrus, this ridge right here. And this is the post-central gyrus. This right here is the cerebral hemisphere. So we have two cerebral hemispheres which are separated by the longitudinal fissure. Earlier, we mentioned the transverse fissure, which separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum, whereas this is the longitudinal fissure, which separates the two cerebral hemispheres. This right here is the frontal lobe, whereas this is the parietal lobe, and this is the occipital lobe. These are the cerebral veins. So we can see in red the cerebral arteries and these are the cerebral veins. Moving to the cross section of the brain. First, we can see one of the two cerebral hemispheres. Posteriorly is the occipital lobe. Remember that the cerebellum is the structure that will guide you toward the posterior aspect of the brain. So whenever you see the cerebellum, you can tell that this is the posterior aspect, and that's the occipital lobe. We can see part of the temporal lobe right here. This is the parietal lobe. 
and this is the cerebellum. Anteriorly, we have the pons. This is the medulla oblongata. We can see part of the spinal cord. Keep in mind that the brain and the spinal cord, they belong to the central nervous system. Again, this is the cerebral hemisphere. This right here is the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is the structure that connects both cerebral hemispheres. Earlier, we mentioned that the two cerebral hemispheres are separated by the longitudinal fissure. The corpus callosum is where the two cerebral hemispheres connect. This right here is the septum pellicidum. This is the fornix, as we can see. This right here is the choroid plexus, which is a collection of blood vessels, as shown in red right here. This is the thalamus. The thalamus is part of the diencephalon. Inferior to the thalamus, we have the hypothalamus. This right here is the interthalamic adhesion, also called the intermediate mass of the thalamus. We can see it part of the thalamus in green. This right here is the interventricular foramen. This is the anterior commissure. Don't confuse the fornix right here with the anterior commissure anteriorly. This is the pineal gland, also called the pineal body. This is the gland that regulates your sleep and wake cycles. It produces the melatonin, which is a hormone secreted by the pineal gland. This right here is the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is the master gland in the body. It controls all other glands. This right here is the optic chiasm. We can see right here the mammillary body. We have two mammillary bodies. This is the superior colliculus, whereas this is the inferior colliculus. Together, they form the corpora quadrigemina. So we have two superior colliculus and two inferior colliculus. Together, they form the corpora quadri, meaning four gemina. Remember, the cerebellum will guide you toward the posterior aspect, and the corpora quadrigemina is on the posterior aspect. This right here is the cerebral aqueduct. So this is a duct where the CSF fluid, the cerebrospinal fluid, circulates through it. This right here is the midbrain. So this part is the midbrain. As we mentioned, this is the pons and this is the medulla oblongata. The midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata, the three of them, they form the brain stem. This right here is the cerebellum. We can see the arbor vitae which is the branching as we, of the white matter. This is the fourth ventricle. So we can see part of the fourth ventricle right here. Check out my next video on the anatomy of the ventricles. 
And this is the choroid plexus, which is a collection of blood vessels. So we have seen the choroid plexus right here, which is part of the third ventricle, and the choroid plexus right here, which is part of the fourth ventricle. I hope you found the video helpful. Check out my next video on the anatomy of the cerebellum.